thinking that their power is greater than his will. He lets them come to you and attack you because he knows you can handle what the enemy is trying to bring at you. And when the enemy brings something at you and you survive it, it does something stronger for you than before that you ever faced it. So God understands all this and God is a God of process. If you just read creation, you can tell that God is very organized. He goes, day one, I make this. Day two, I make this. Day three, I make this. Day four, I make this. And God is very, very, uh, very particular about what he does. There's nothing accidental. And you read in the lives of people in the Bible, God ordered things on purpose in their life. He knew that Joseph would be 30 years old leading Egypt, but he gave him a dream at 17. And that made 13 years that he had to go through a process of becoming the man that God wanted him to be before he stepped out before Egypt and everyone would bow the knee. Moses was destined at 80 years old to lead 3 million people out of Egypt, but it took 80 years of trials and pain and backstabbing and fear and running and loneliness because God knew when it's time to be used in a great way, you have had to been through a process unless if you because if you don't go through the process what you're about to do will go to your head and so I make sure that I put you through a desert I put you through a valley I put you through a storm and when you come out of it you will thank me that you went through it because you realize that is what connected you to what you're doing now does this make sense to anybody at all God is extremely particular about your life he knows the hairs that are on your head he knows the days in your life how many heartbeats you have left before you die every detail is completely handled by God hallelujah everything he does is a process even when he came to the earth he didn't come riding a stallion, breaking through the clouds and saying, I'm the king. Everyone bow down. He came as a baby and went through the process of growing up and learning and being like you and being like me. Because he even himself would not interrupt his process for what he was going to do. I've seen a lot of miracles. I'll tell you something about them. I've seen some crazy miracles in the last three months. But one miracle I've never seen is a lady have a baby the minute after she gets pregnant. Some things are just going to have a process. Some things take nine months. No matter what you want to do about it, there's some miracles that God is not going to do quickly like you want him to do. You're going to go through the trial. It looks easier to go around the Red Sea, Moses, but if you go through the Red Sea, you'll be much more thankful after you get on the other side of the Red Sea. When you go around it, your past can still follow you, but when you go through it, even though you don't want to face that water, when you survive it, what was following you drowns in the water, and so you understand some things you've just got to go through to understand where God's taking you to. This is the pattern of God. Demons have patterns too. They have processes. Make no mistake about it. The, the devil's desire in your life is to separate you from your relationship with God. That is his will. That is his plan from the beginning of time. He hates your relationship with God. Adam and Eve are walking with God every day, so the devil does something to sever that relationship. He gets Eve in a corner when God's not talking at that moment, and he severs their walk with God. That's what he does throughout the word of God. That's what happened with Job when he attacked Job. He wanted to curse his relationship with God. It wasn't about hurting Job. He said, I bet if I touch him, he will curse you. That's what he wanted Job to do. He wanted to curse God. God. That's what he wanted. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to curse your faith and curse your joy and curse your expectation in God. There's a pattern in the spirit world. Make no mistake about it that demons follow and that is disconnecting you from your relationship with the Lord. That is not accidental. That's what happened to Judas. He walked with God for three and a half years. Then the devil entered in, into him and severed the walk with God. That's what happened with Lot. He walked with Abraham every day 
until something severed that relationship and he went towards Sodom and Gomorrah. It is the will of the devil to sever your relationship with God, to kill your prayer life, to kill your faithfulness. L- listen, you can be carnal if you want to, but when you start skipping two and three services, you, you should wake up and pay attention. That's not something that's just life. That is something the devil is involved with. He wants to kill, I feel the Holy Ghost up here, your relationship with the house of God, with the man of God, and with the God of the house. That didn't get much, but it's still truth. When the enemy can start killing that connection, he starts working on faith then. And he starts working on anything you have that God has given you. He comes to steal. This is his pattern. He wants to steal your health. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to steal your joy. And the Lord is a God of process. The devil is a devil of process. Angels have patterns. Angels come at the breaking of the day. Angels come and go at the breaking of the day. That's why the greatest time to get your prayers up, and there's a lot of verses in your Bible that will back up what I'm saying, is early in the morning before the break of day. Why? Why is it so important to get up early before the sunrise? I'll tell you why. Because angels come and go at the breaking of the day. Big deal. Well, the big deal is angels carry your prayers to heaven according to revelation 5 and revelation 8 they pick up your prayer and they bring them before god and they dump them out before the lord out of a vial and a sweet smelling savor comes before god that's why the angel came down to daniel he said i am come for your words i am here to pick up your prayers and carry them to heaven so you can sleep in if you want to every single day but every once in a while it might do you some good if you want a prayer answered to get up before the sunrise and get praying because when that angel comes down he'll have something to carry up when he go I feel the Holy Ghost right now he'll have something to take up to heaven that was worth it right there that was worth the whole trip that's a key right there in the spirit right there I hope someone gets spiritual and grabs that tomorrow morning you can I promise you uh, listen to me I please take this you will see more prayers answered By getting up in the morning and praying than any other way of praying. Just about three weeks ago, I saw six prayers answered, six huge prayers in one day. Out of nowhere miracles. But that morning at five o'clock, I was up in the presence of the Lord bringing those things to God. And on the same day, I'll tell you what happened. An angel came down and grabbed my prayer and took it up to heaven and God answered it. If you want a prayer answered, get up and talk to the king. Get up and talk to God. Get up and reach him. Get up and grab him. Get up and pursue him. That's what he's desiring. Hallelujah. That was for free. They come for your words. Angels come. They're, they're strategic. They come at specific times, the breaking of the day. That's, that's what happened when, when Jacob was wrestling the angel. The angel said, let me go for the day breaketh. What does he mean? I've got to go back. So I need you to let go of me. I've got to report to God. There are angels of war. There are angels that come give messages. There are angels that come to heal. And this story, this angel's job was to trouble water. Now, I'm going to talk to you. Because I don't know when it started or how it started. But God told an angel, go down to this pool, stir the water up. And whoever gets in first gets healed. Okay? So, I don't know if they saw the angel fly down. Or if they just saw the water moving. And someone decided to take a bath. But somebody got in the water. And when they did, this is so deep, they were healed. Now, that's not the miracle. The miracle is... Somebody picked up on the pattern of the angel. He said he came at this time, this date. And every season he would come back 
So about once a year, he would come back at the same time. And guess what? Someone else would be waiting. And they would jump in. And they would get healed. And this started happening every year. See, some people get it and some people don't. Some people will get a miracle from God and forget it the next day. That is so true right here. Some people will pray their guts out for God to answer them, cry and weep, and when he does it, they'll skip church Wednesday night. Oh, it's quiet, but that was good preaching. That was good, wasn't it? You didn't like that, some of you. It's amazing. I'm just going to be real. It's amazing the people that will plead and beg and cry and pray and promise God everything if he just gives them a job. And then when he gives them a job, they can't make church for six months. You don't have to get with me, but I'm preaching good anyway right now. Listen, I don't think it's the will of God to bless you with your prayer being answered and then forget God after he gave me what I wanted. He's not a gumball machine that I walk away from. If he gave it to me because I was praying hard, I should thank him just as much afterwards by being faithful to him as I did when I needed him to answer the prayer. But it's amazing in our human tendencies when things start feeling good and God answers the prayer that we forget God. I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this all my life in the ministry. My dad was a pastor. I've been around it my whole life. People get desperate when they get in trouble. And people become unfaithful when things are going good. Yes, that's not in Alaska. That's everywhere. When people are in trouble, when the marriage is rocky, we're going to church tomorrow. And then God touches them in the altar. Oh, I love you, babe. It's all going to be all right. And they're not even there the next service. Why? Because they got their band-aid. But the band-aid is not the answer. The answer was what you felt in there. It's a continuing process with God so if I got touched and I needed a miracle at church wouldn't it make sense that I would keep going back to where I got touched so I can keep feeling what I'm feeling that's healing my situation and my trouble (laughs) hallelujah the angel came down and someone said man this dude's coming every year at the same time I like people that get it I like people that come with expectation that something's going to happen. Something's going to happen at church today. Something's going to happen at church today. Something's going to happen at church today. I've got to get there. I've got to be there. Today's my day for a miracle. Today, I've probably told you this before, but I remember in a prayer meeting a few months ago, God spoke to me strong when I asked him, why aren't you healing like you used to? And he said, my people never prophesy their way into my presence anymore. The days of old, they would say before church, tonight's my night. Today's my day. I'm getting healed. I'm getting a miracle. But now... They come and they wait on you to preach them into having faith for their miracle. Someone needs to wake up with faith and say, I'm not going to wait till next Sunday. I'm going to get an answer today. I will get touched by God today. I have faith for God to do it now. So uh, he said, uh, "This this is starting to become a normal thing. And the crowd started getting bigger. Before long... It's a mob waiting on an angel to trouble the water. This is the most exciting moment of the year in Bethesda. This is the greatest moment of these people's lives. This is crazy. If I bet you, if in San Jose, if it started stirring up where once a year an angel went down to a certain spot in this city and troubled water and whoever jumped in of disease was healed, I bet you after about three or four years... There'd be thousands and thousands of people coming, just expecting, hoping they're the one. People, people, I was at Office Depot the other night and was next to Best Buy. And people were, it was like 9 o'clock at night and they were lined up outside Best Buy all the way to Office Depot, sitting on the ground. And I said, what are you guys doing? They said, tomorrow uh, a new gaming system is coming out. I was like, you are a loser. 
You are 35. Get a job, dude. I mean, these are grown men sitting there going, I'm going to sleep here all night on this concrete sidewalk till 10 o'clock tomorrow so I can be the 37th person inside the store to get the gaming system. That's the world we live in. Black Friday is now Black Thursday. And people are at, at Walmart and Best Buy and every other store at 2 o'clock in the afternoon waiting for 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. How insane is that to get the new TV screen? And we come to church bored. Oh, that just hit. I don't need to sit in the front. I'm not expecting God to do anything. I just chill back here. This is my spot. Maybe if we put a gaming system up here. Maybe if we put something up here that was more carnal, some people would get in line. Maybe if we did that, some people in the world would show up to show us what expectation really is. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting on something right now. Because we would see their expectation for a, an electronic piece of equipment is greater than some of our expectation in the king of the universe answering our prayers. Oh, it's, you don't have to get with me, but I'm still right on that right now. I wonder what God feels about me coming to his presence, just browsing and not really expecting something to happen. Well, if I see something I like, I might go after it. If I hear something I like, I may go down to the altar. If I feel something, I might reach up and pray. But if I don't, I'll just go home with nothing like I'm shopping in a store. That is not the place to do that. This is not a store. This is the house of the king of all kings and the lord of all lords and he wants to heal you he wants to help you he wants to deliver you somebody praise him right now i feel something beneath the surface in here hallelujah hallelujah Now, if you can't physically sit in the front, I'm not attacking you. But that human spirit that I don't care, I'm attacking that. Because that is a miracle killer. That's a revival killer. That's a preacher killer. That's a pastor killer. That's a faith killer. That's a unity killer. When you say, I'm not going to go pray. When pastor says, let's all stand, and you don't stand. When pastor says, let's all come forward, and you're sitting like a statue. I'm preaching to you. I don't even know who you are. You hear this preacher. God is not pleased with your spirit and with your attitude. This is not some store where you can get something. You've got to know God wants you to believe it. God wants you to go after it. And God God wants you to hunger for it. It's a powerful, powerful God. And everybody started lining up on the edge, waiting for the miracle. And every year, here he comes. And boom, a blind man gets in. A lame man gets in. A deaf guy gets in. Boom, I can see. I can walk. I can hear, wow, he's doing it still, he's every year. And then this troubled me. It says that they're sitting there waiting. The angel's doing his job, right? He's doing it, right? It's, it's not like he's, last year no one got healed. Why does Jesus have to show up to a place where the miraculous is still flowing? People are expecting something to happen. People are hungry. Why does he interrupt his own process? He set this process up. He set the angel. You go down this. Why in the world does Jesus show up to something that he's already in control of and ordering? It makes no sense to me why he has to interrupt something that's clearly working. The crowd is getting bigger. The, the mob is there. Everyone's ready to be healed. Everyone's on the edge, at the edge of the pool wanting to be healed. Everyone's there wanting to happen. The angel's healing people why does Jesus have to show up and interrupt his own process and to know me I'm crazy so I asked him that and he said to me really quickly not everybody was on the edge and 
I said, what? He said, not everyone was on the edge. There are some people that he wants to heal, but they never get close enough to the miracle. They're in the right place. They've got a situation he can fix. He wants to fix. But let me show you what's in the way. There was a man there. Hasn't moved in a long time. What, 38 years? Hasn't moved. And he's lying down, the Bible said. And Jesus comes to him. And Jesus sees him and says, Wilt thou be made whole? And he said, watch this, sir, watch the excuses. Number, number one excuse, I have no man. I don't have anyone helping me. Other people are there because they've got people helping them get there. I want to be healed, but I don't have the connections other people have. That's why they're getting miracles. They're connected to the right people. I'm jealous. I have no man to put me to the water when the water is troubled. Watch this. Now, this is, this, is, this is admitting something. He's saying, I can't get in the water by myself. I need someone to push me into the miraculous. I remember one time at General Conference, a man in a wheelchair, they pushed him to the front. And, and, and it was a faith service. And I remember walking down there, Pastor Nielsen, and I remember we were all praying with him. And I mean, I thought, man, God's going to heal this guy. I walked in and they were praying. And I leaned down to him. I said, hey, let's get out of that wheelchair. You ready to get out of the wheelchair? He said, uh, if I get out of the wheelchair, I'll fall on my face. No. I said, oh, really? Everybody stop praying. He doesn't want to be healed. You're wasting my time. When I come to pray for you, and you really don't want a miracle. Oh, I can tell you about a lady that came up one time in a wheelchair, and she had diabetes. And I, she said, pray for me, my diabetes, the, the, the sugar level is at over 400 right now. I could die at any moment. I said, I'm going to pray to you out of the wheelchair. She said, no. I get a check for being in the wheelchair. I was like, oh, wow. Hope it's worth it. Diabetes go. She goes to the back to the back and she's healed of diabetes. Still healed today. Still in the wheelchair. What do you say? God was going to get her out of the wheelchair. But she said, I really don't want it. So, he said, no, I don't have anybody helping me. And while I am coming, another man stepped down before me. Now, here's where I have a problem, a couple problems. He said, while I'm trying to get to the miracle, people keep getting in my way. Now, first of all, he's lying. Because the Bible says he was laying down. He's telling Jesus, I'm going after it. But his actions are saying, I'm chilling. Boy, this is going to preach real good or real bad right now. <laughs> he's saying, I'm hungry for it. With my words, but his actions are saying, not really. I'm just content here on my pew. It's quiet, but I'm going to dig the spirit out of here. He's saying, I really want you to heal me. I really believe your power can heal. But his actions are saying, I'm not really going to go after it. Quiet. And the reason I can't. It's because other people keep cutting me off. Here's the problem. I've got my eyes on people, not the angel. I've got my eyes on everybody doing better than me. Everybody more connected than me. Everybody hurting me. Everybody stepping in front of me. Everybody forgetting me. Everybody going beyond me. And I can't get over it. Now I understand why God interrupts his own processes. Because he loves this guy enough, even though his spirit is bad and bitter. He loves this man enough to know at one time you came here expecting to be healed. And your expectation has turned into frustration 
because of your position. And so, I'm going to ignore who's in front of you, who cut you off, who's not helping you, why you're mad, and ask you point blank in the middle of you not thinking it's going to happen today, do you think you can be healed right now? Are you ready to leave this service delivered from unforgiveness? I didn't expect that one to go over very well. Yeah. See, if I say, are you ready to leave this service with a financial miracle coming this week? Come to the front. It's my word, Lord. But if I say, the key to your financial miracle is you've forgiven someone that you've hated the last tw 12 years. Quiet. Then someone buckles the seatbelt. I'm not going anywhere. Then stay sick. Stay broke. Stay lonely. Stay depressed. Stay afraid. But some keys to your miracle are saying, I've got to get over everybody that's hurt me and that's in my way and get my eyes on Jesus. He's the only thing that can help me right now. What if your key to your hovering miracle that has not fallen on you yet was simply, truly forgiving someone, truly letting go. You know what real forgiveness is? The ability to let go of wanting revenge. Not, oh, I'll let go of it, God, I put them into your hands. That's not forgiveness. You know what you're actually saying? Be honest. God, kill them. That's what you're saying, you faker, <laughs> hypocrite, act all spiritual. You're asking God, car wreck, come on, God. And then when it happens, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> Tragic. Thank you, Lord. Some people just act holy. That's not forgiveness. I put them into your hands, Lord. You are just. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'm just reading your word, God. No. You know what real forgiveness is? God, I'm letting go of everything they did, and I'm asking you to let go of everything that they did. I'm asking you to forgive them. Watch this. I'm asking you to bless them. Now, I know I'm, this response is going to go really quiet right now, but you want to get, really, get really deep into forgiveness? Go, go to this level. God, I'm asking you to bless them more than you bless me. Give them more than you gave me. Help them more than you helped me. Oh, I would never pray that. Fine. Stay sick. Stay broke. They're still winning in your life right now over something that happened years ago. You want victory over them? Walk away by letting that go and walk toward what God wants you to have. I don't know why I'm preaching this this morning, but I'm feeling God right now. That's the problem right there with a lot of us. Something we won't let go of is keeping us from something we want to grab a hold of. You can't reach for God with both hands when you've got a hold of someone's throat back here saying, Come on, God, you know what they've done wrong. And that's the problem. And Jesus had to... Simply identify, let the man speak it all out. And then when he realized, I've got all the excuses in the world why I'm not on the edge. He just said, arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Get up, clean up your mess, and leave here. You won't need to sit where you're sitting anymore. I've come to let you know that the people are not the problem. Your vision is the problem. You've got Jesus and an angel in a crowd, and you're looking at people. Oh, it's quiet. Come on now. I don't care who's preaching up here. If Jesus Christ was on that step right there, and an angel was on that step, would you really be looking at me right now?
Would you really be looking at sister so-and-so across? I can't believe she's here. She never comes on Sunday school. Oh, yeah, I'm just reading some of your minds. I can't believe. What in the world? Why did he look at me like that? Would you wouldn't care. And I bet, this is going to get really quiet, but I bet if there was a Jesus right there and an angel right there, I bet most of us probably wouldn't be chilling right there where we are. Because if Jesus manifests on a, on a, I will stomp you into the ground to get to him. I don't care how big you are. I will run you over to get to him. That's what we've got to realize. He's in the room right now. He's in the, oh, shit. He's in the room right now. Sit there like a statue if you want. Don't get healed. But if you really believe that he's able and that he can do anything, you got to go after him. You got to reach him. You got to pursue him. You got to hunger. You got to believe. You got to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Somebody stand up and clap those hands and lift up that voice right now. Faith is in this room. Faith is in this room. That's the Lord touching her right there. She just simply walked up here and the Lord is touching her. Why? Because if you'll reach for him, he'll reach back to you. If you'll pursue him, he will pursue you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, there we go, there we go, come on, somebody start believing that this week God's going to give me a miracle, this week God's interrupting everything, this week God's healing my family, this week God's delivering my baby, this week God's bringing a miracle, this week... Somebody, scoot your way to the edge. Crawl your way through a crowd and touch the hem of that garment. You want a miracle? Show some desperation. You want an answer? Show some faith. You want God to intervene? Show God you want Him. Now, look, if you come up here Ready? I'm going to say something real hard. If you come up here waiting for me to pray for you, I'm not an angel troubling water and I'm not Jesus I'm only a human like you if I come pray with you that's because God told me to but you shouldn't be up here waiting on me or pastor to lay hands on you you should be coming reaching for the king reaching for the Lord yes I'll get up yes I'll forgive somebody yes I want to be healed would you just lift your hands toward him before we pray for miracles would you pray for forgiveness right now would you forgive somebody right now oh I feel the Holy Ghost and I feel the devil mad right now no music right now I don't know why but I want all you guys to come join us down here is that alright sorry I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now this is a divine moment where supernatural things interrupt the process don't be shocked when God blows your mind don't be shocked when God interrupts everything don't be surprised when God steps out of nowhere forgive somebody right now you know who you know who the one if I mentioned their name you would cringe if I mentioned that name you'd get upset that's the one let go of that thing let go of that grudge forgive that person why because when you forgive you get yourself on the edge. Forgiveness 
is access to the edge of the pool. Forgiveness, hear me in the Holy Ghost. Forgiveness is access to the water. Forgiveness is access to the miracle. Forgiveness is saying, I'm ready. Isn't it any wonder that when your sins are forgiven, Peter said, repent and then be baptized. In other words, your repentance is the key to the forgiveness which comes from the water. Some of you are getting the miracle right now. Your miracle is an emotional healing. Your heart's been bruised and scarred and ripped open multiple times by multiple people. And you don't know who to forgive the most because you've got so much anger and so much pain directed at so many people. Start by forgiving yourself right now. Forgive yourself for holding the grudge, for holding the bitterness. Oh, I'm feeling something rocking in here right now. Grab your neighbor's hand right now. Don't pray for them, but pray with them and say, God, help them to forgive. I pray with them right now. Help them to forgive. Help them to forgive somebody right now. Help them to forgive somebody right now. Help them to let go of something right now. The Holy Ghost is in this room. The Holy Ghost is in this room. Let the Lord help you forgive somebody. You talk about peace coming. You talk about some peace headed your way. You talk about some peace headed your... I mean the guy that did you wrong and deserves justice. I mean the guy, the lady that has stabbed you in the back. The one that's caused hell in your finances, in your home, in your mind. Someone's getting on the edge. Someone just stepped three steps forward. Someone just said, I'm tired of being in the back. I'm tired of waiting year after year for a miracle that seems like it's never coming. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive her. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive her. I'm not telling you something I don't know. Three weeks ago on a Sunday morning driving to church, I had about a three hour drive and the Lord began to reveal to me people that had hurt me, that I thought it was over, that I was not over it. Because every time their name is mentioned, I get upset. And the Lord told me to call and text certain ones, all of them. And every single one of them got a call or a text me forgiving them or loving them or repenting and in the next week I had seven doors open up all over the country miracles huge breakthroughs I've been praying for for years they have been locked opened up out of nowhere I'll tell you when those doors open I knew immediately when they happened I knew when I was texting and calling people that God was saying okay now you're ready okay now you're ready okay now you're ready all I'm telling you is what you're doing right now. I know some of you are waiting for me to transition and pray for your miracle. But what you're doing right now is just as important, if not more important, than you getting healed of that diabetes or whatever the job you're asking God for or the situation at home in your house. What you're doing right now is bringing closure to a world that has caused pain after pain. Don't let them hurt you ever again. Shut the door and let it go and thank the Lord for everything being peaceful. What are you saying, Brother Herring, that the key 
to favor is forgiveness. The key to favor is forgiveness. The key, hear me, the key to future blessings is letting go of past pain. Forgive that so you can grab that. Forgive her so you can get this. Let go of that so you can have this. It's the process. And now I bind every spirit of sickness in the name of the Lord Jesus. I come against every devouring spirit at every job financially, attacking people in this church. I address the spirit of fear, attacking a man, telling him he can't provide for his family. He's going to lose his home. I curse that in the name of Jesus right now. I speak life into the veins of this church. I speak life into the bloodstream of this church. There will be miracles. There will be answers. There will be healings. And God is going to make a way out of no way. And God is going to get the last word let your home be healed this week somebody's home is going to get healed your home life is going to get healed where there's arguing there's going to be anointing where there's division there's going to be unity where there's fighting there's going to be favor where there's strife there's going to be peace some of you someone in here You got a spouse that doesn't go here. I pray this prayer over your spouse that just as you softened the heart of Pharaoh after he was hardened time after time, miracle after miracle, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. I speak right now in the name of Jesus that you would go to that person and you would soften that heart to a degree that they melt in your presence, that they feel your spirit on their spouse when they walk through the door. You don't need anybody laying hands on you right now. Your pain can go away right now. Your pain in your back can go away right now. Your pain in your body can go away. The pain in your spirit can go away. It's all God all by himself. Interrupting a service. Coming down. Somebody just get lost. I know we're getting to the church service time, but can you just get lost for a few minutes right now? Can you close your eyes with me? Can you raise your hands and can you just not worry about who's beside you or who's in front of you and who's in the microphone or what's going on behind you? Can you just help me entertain Jesus right now? Can you help me? Can you start talking to him now? Can you start telling him, I need you. I love you. Please help me. Forgive me. Hallelujah. 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 There are miracles in here. There are miracles in here. There's stuff coming to you. Some of you, some of you to wake up in the spirit because some of your answers are coming quicker than you think they are. You think there's a certain deadline is coming, but it's going to come before then. Some of you are going to get God in involved with what you're doing right now. And when God gets involved, he shows up when he wants to. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now you want to give the devil a black eye? 
You want to go one step further? I hear, here's, here's an injection of faith. Ready? I want you to start thanking God in advance right now. I want you to worship God like it's already done right now. Like you, you're going to get the report from the doctor. The boss is going to call you into the office and say you've been promoted. The, the conversation is going to be peaceful at home instead of... She called him a ha. That's the key right there. When you forgive, start declaring it's over. God is involved. It's done. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't mean to, normally I would be dumb, but I, I, I'm here in the Lord. I want to tell you someone right now. Someone in here, the person that you don't want to forgive is about to die. Don't let them go into eternity. I feel the Holy Ghost. Why am I saying this? Not forgiven by you. So whoever it is, whoever it is, start praying right now in the spirit. I don't know. You know, I don't know who it is, but I know I just heard God. Someone you don't want to forgive is about to step into eternity. And you're going to live with regret for a long time. If you don't tell the Lord right now, I let it go. I'm forgiving them right now. I know I'm making it quiet, but I know when I hear that. It's awful quiet. Is anyone going to do it? Is anyone going to forgive somebody? Right? Make it right. You might have to call someone after church. You might have to write a letter, send a text message. It's a word from the Lord.